on Sportsline. Talking really anything you want tonight, but we focus a little bit here on the John Gruden situation. It is messy. It's messy for John Gruden. Obviously, he's out of a job over things he said that were completely inappropriate in an email that obviously should never ever have been sent or multiple emails that should never have been sent. But I think it's also messy for the NFL and the way that this happened, considering it comes from an investigation of another team. And now the Raiders are without a coach because of the investigation in Washington and the fact that people somewhere in that office in Park Avenue in New York City have leaked this information to multiple papers over the past week, seemingly to force the idea that Gruden would be out of a job. And how that plays out, maybe how it plays out in a greater societal sense as well. Our phone lines are open, 737-7767 is the number. Anthony's been waiting for a bit. Anthony, we appreciate that. Welcome here to the program. Yeah, so, see, what I'm trying to say is it's deeper than what you think it is because they have revealed, revealed, as they have revealed, we sent them to, that was carrying on this conversation with him, and no punishment, executive punishment had been done to that person. And and the Raiders, the Raiders being the team they is and the problem they had, they should have done an in-depth, in-depth investigation, background check, like a normal job, you got a job out here. They're supposed to do a deep investigation of the personnel they're going to hire, especially the head coach and getting them that kind of money, 50 to $100 million in guaranteed millions, Something is wrong here. And see, more of why I say it's deeper, when they start talking about Myrie, Myrie Snips, lips, look like plates, them are racial attitudes that should have been gone and in the past, nothing like that should even came up. And uh, what makes me angry when he said that, they got all these minority coaches, the guy coaching over at Eric Belimini is coaching over with the uh, – with uh, 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 the Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs, and he ain't been offered a job. It's all been white head coaches, and uh, and the mid NFL owners all are being embarrassed and ashamed of themselves, carrying on his racial stereotype. And that's why I don't go out of my way to go to these games with a Titan or whatever. The Titans done the same thing. They had chances to get head black coaches, system coaches. And when they get there, somehow or other they disappear. They're gone. So it's deeper than what you think it is. Because it oh. goes to the heart of the matter. These owners are, are snubby and just uh, just like Jones down in Texas. And he told Trump, yeah, Trump, Mr. Trump, I'll fire him. You want me to fire him? I'll fire him. What kind of, what kind of owner does stuff like that? Because, man, I, I don't understand that because a man took a knee. Yeah, I'll fire him for you. Mr. President, well, so well, I tell you, these owners are outrageous. Well, Anthony, I, I appreciate the call, and, and your sentiments, I think, are with a lot of people right here. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll step back on is Jerry Jones never said, Mr. President, if you want me to fire him, I'll fire him. That was never uttered by an NFL owner. But this does go to everything that the NFL has been dealing with over the last several years. They have put a huge emphasis on their prioritization of social justice, of Black Lives Matter, all those sort of things within the league. They, they want to promote racial harmony, and they've done it overtly with paintings in the back of the end zone, with slogans, with ad campaigns, all of that sort of stuff since the kneeling and the protests with that and all of the fallout with President Trump. That's where the NFL is focused on. And yes, there are some people around the league who thought this was taking a step back to, to see this out in print. Now, I think there's an argument on the other side that seeing something from 12 years ago or 10 years ago or eight years ago that comes out, I don't know if that's taking a step back from the mission you've had for the last three or four years because it predates the mission you had for the last three or four years. But it is no question that has raised some red flags around the league in this situation. Now, the, the part about Washington and then Vegas and what it thought with Gruden is here's the deal. Bruce Allen isn't going to get any punishment because he's not in the league anymore. He's done. He's retired. He's out of the league. That's over. That's who these emails were corresponding with. So that's it. So John Gruden's the only other party here. 
again, I think there's questions why we haven't seen more about what went on in the investigation and what it found in Washington. But John Gruden's the only person getting disciplined out of these emails because he's the only person who, at least as of yesterday, was still left in the league. And in terms of Oakland at the time, Vegas now, in their hiring or rehiring of John Gruden, that's it. He had previously been there. They knew everything about him. They knew how he acted around people in the organization. They knew how he treated the players. They knew what his record was on the field and that they got him to a Super Bowl. They knew he went on from there to Tampa and won a Super Bowl. And then he was on Monday Night Football. I mean, they knew everything in John Gruden's background, except for, I guess, these emails. But I don't know if you get this in the background check normally. Because, again, up until... This Washington investigation, nobody was looking into John Gruden about anything. He was just the maybe somewhat egotistical Super Bowl winning head coach that made a bazillion dollars as a Monday night football analyst and now is back on the sideline. It was the investigation into Washington that uncovered these emails. And that's what has led to this entire situation. Back to the phones we go. Say hello to Wayne. Wayne, good evening. Welcome to the show. Hey, Steve, how are you tonight? I'm good. Thanks for the call. Steve, we are in a time where it's uh, saying that that uh, our technology has got so advanced. You're talking about private email and this, that, and other. There is nothing in across this globe, in this whole world, that's private anymore. You may think it is. But it's not. And stuff like this, it don't matter if it's you, me, or Coach Gruden. Or, uh, we don't need to do these things, period. I agree with what you're saying 110%. But it's done. And Coach should have known better than that. Because, uh, like I say, you you can't hide nothing or, or nothing anymore. Our technology has gotten so advanced Somewhere down the line, it's going to come back to haunt you. Sure. Speak on that a minute. Yeah. No, Wayne, I think you're 100% right. And as I said off the top of really the last segment, there's no excuse for what John Gruden said. It shouldn't be part of a joke. It shouldn't be to your best friend. It shouldn't be. There just isn't a place to think those types of thoughts about people. But there's also a huge difference between actively acting on those thoughts and how you treat people face to face and interact with them and what you may say to someone somewhere along the way. John Gruden had worked with Bruce Allen for a long time. They were good friends. Neither one of them ever thought this conversation was going to get out. Does it excuse the conversation? Absolutely not. Again, there's no place for that. But Raise your hand if you, in the private conversation with someone that you trust vehemently, have never said anything that might be thought of as offensive in somebody. Never used a joke. Never done anything that might cross that line. Again, don't do it on a work email. Don't do it in a public type setting, which is what these gentlemen were doing. Gruden from his private email, Bruce Allen working for the Washington football team. But I think a lot of people, probably most people watching this show, would not like it for their private conversations like that to be unearthed at some point. And that's what happened here. And again, it doesn't mean it's good. But that is exactly what happened here. And uh, Wayne's right that nothing's private anymore. And you should always think about that. Because when you say something to one person, it might get around. And if you put it down in a text message or an email to somebody, it absolutely can come back on you. And we've seen that time and time again in society these days. And so it's something to always be mindful of. And John Gruden is most definitely guilty of saying things he should not have said. And being guilty of being dumb enough to put it into a format, like an email, that could come back to haunt him at some point. Absolute truth to that. No question about it. 
Back to the line we go. Say hello. Is this is this Marty? Marty, good evening. Hey, how you doing? Doing well. No uh, question. I just want to say, you know, what John Gruden uh, did, it was wrong, but he said, uh, you know, but people need to understand John Gruden apologized. That's what people need to understand. This man stood up and apologized for what he did. And we need to leave that alone. You know, let it go. You know, what's done is done. Let it go. You know, that's what's wrong with the world now. We keep going back. You know, just go go on. Let, let it go. Let it be. You know, he apologized. He stood up as a man. He apologized. And that's all I got to say about it. All right, Marty. Thanks. I appreciate that. I, I do think, as I said earlier, one thing that we have lost in a complete polarization of our political atmosphere of the last few years. And there's a lot of reasons that come into it. Obviously, the 2016 election was very divisive to the country on right down the red and blue line. And COVID, I think, has done that to another extreme. But even when you look at the NFL and a lot of their policies and what some of the players have done and what they've said and how government has acted towards that, how some of the fans have acted towards that, we're in an extreme place right now that... I, I don't know if we've ever been at this place where it is so polar opposite of the viewpoints being expressed. And because of that, it has become kind of this country where it's 100% black or white. Not in a racial sense, but in a, a line in the sand sense. You're either on this side and therefore the person on the other side is dead wrong, always and probably evil, or you're on this side and it's vice versa. I do think there are a ton of people, I'd like to think I'm one of them that lives somewhere in the middle of that, but the rhetoric these days from both sides are on the extremes. And because of that, we have this kind of just bubbling animosity towards one another and it means when something like this comes up, people are quick to pounce. And look, John Gruden needed to apologize. He needed to say that what I did was wrong, and he did. He said it wasn't intended to hurt anybody. It wasn't racial in nature of what he was trying to say. And that he should never have done it. He didn't want to hurt anybody, and he didn't want to be a distraction now. He made that apology. You hope he's grown from those mistakes and continues to do so. But the idea that so many people came out yesterday and just wanted essentially Gruden's head on a platter and his career over immediately, I don't know. Is, is that good? Is that the best way we can live? Because there was a time, I don't think all that long ago, the, he's got to make the apology. People need to see remorse from him. But if they do, maybe you move on. It doesn't happen like that now. And maybe that's a sign of progress of where we're getting into some of these issues. Maybe it's a sign that we just don't like each other very much. And we're way too willing to run out there and tear people down when we get the opportunity. But what happened yesterday is people pounced on a situation with a guy on a pedestal, well, always, and tore him down as fast as they possibly could. Maybe it'll serve as a lesson to a lot of people out there. I hope it does. I hope it does. But I also hope we don't see a similar situation like this come up anytime soon because it's been ugly over the last 48 hours, or really probably 72 hours going back to Friday. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back after this.